What's up guys, Justin here from TheRenderingEssentials.com um, So I'm starting a series on Lumion and uh, basically the different lighting options and basically all the different things you can do with Lumion. So I'm really excited to be starting with this program. In this video, I'm gonna just kind of run you through real quick some of the interior lighting options um, available to you. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I just wanna give kind of a general overview and then we can talk a little further in detail about what some of these lights do. But I mean, obviously the first, uh, the first lighting option within a model in Lumion is using the actual environment or using the sunlight. And you can actually adjust that. And by the way, this is one of the default models that comes with Lumion. So you can open that up when you first open um, the program and play around with it. But so the first, the first lighting option is controlled basically in this little tab on the left hand side called weather and you can adjust the sun direction and location as well as how high the sun is or if you drag this down to the bottom you can actually make it nighttime as well so you can see how as I adjust this you can create different looks you even get kind of a, like a sunrise look um, depending on where this is set and you can also adjust the brightness of the sunlight so you'll notice how things get brighter or dimmer depending on how bright this is so that's probably the easiest way to illuminate daytime exterior models so but i also want to talk about some of the interior lighting options and so what i'm what i'm going to do in this case is i'm going to fly inside this building and i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to drag my sun height down so that it's night and so when you do that, hey, I placed an emissive material over here. We'll talk about that in a minute. So when you do that, you can see how what this does is this actually removes a lot of the exterior light. You're still getting a little bit coming in and also the camera exposure automatically changes. So I wanna talk about some of the other kinds of light that you can bring in. And so to bring in different kinds of lights, you wanna go over to the objects section and you're gonna look under lights and utilities. And so what lights and utilities is gonna do is that's gonna allow you to bring in a bunch of different kinds of lights. So you can see how this allows you to bring in things like spotlights and omni lights and area lights. We'll talk about all those real quick. So the first thing I wanna talk about is a spotlight. And so a spotlight is basically, it, it, it's a light emanating from a point, but it has a direction associated with it. So let's say I was to click up here, you can see how this would bring a spotlight into your rendering. And you'll notice when you do that, there's a whole bunch of different things that you can adjust from the brightness of the light to the cone angle. And so what the cone angle is, is basically how wide the light spreads from your point where your light comes from. So you can see how I can make that really kind of focused on one area or I can make it a little bit wider. And you'll also notice that as you turn your brightness up and down, um, different things change like how harsh the transition is between the light and the dark in your shadows. So you can see how you can use this to create a lot of different looks. You can also adjust if the light source is shown. And so basically what that means, and I may need to move this down a little bit. So I think I'm gonna drag it down just a little bit. If you turn on show light source, then you'll actually have a point of light where the light's coming from. If you turn it off, you won't. And one thing to note is this is basically one of the only interior artificial lights that's gonna cast shadows. And you can adjust the calculation of the shadows. So you can see how as I click on this, there's a few different options. So there's medium shadows, high shadows, and then dynamic, which is calculated every frame. I don't recommend the dynamic unless you have a really fast computer. And even then, I'm not really sure why you would want that, but you can turn that on if you want. Um, but you can see how if you look at the edges of the shadows that are being cast, they're much higher resolution if you click the high. And then they may be a little bit higher with the dynamic, but I'm just gonna leave this on high. I think my computer can handle it. And so the last thing I wanna point out or talk about with this kind of a light is you can actually adjust where it points. So you can do that by clicking on this button right here for target light. And you can see how you can actually click on a point and it'll point the light in that direction. So you can also, and then once you've uh, kind of got that pointing where you want it to, you can click on this check mark in order to do kind of a final set of that. And you can also rotate this. So if you were to come in here and rotate this, this would also point that light in a different direction. So and you can also change colors, which you can see how this uh, really makes a change to the feel of the scene, depending on how white or how yellow or how blue 
the light is. So that's the spotlight. The next lights I want to talk about are the, the Omni light and the light fill. And so these are actually somewhat similar in what they do. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trash or remove my spotlight right here. And now let's go ahead and let's bring in an Omni light. And in this case, we're going to use the actual Omni light itself. Basically what the Omni light is, is it's a light that emanates from a point in space. So basically the light moves in all different directions from that point. And so you can adjust this, and as you adjust this, you can see how it changes where your lighting is. And one thing you'll notice about this kind of light is that it doesn't cast shadows. And so that's something you just need to be aware of. It's really good at like brightening up a space, but it doesn't necessarily cast shadows. So if you needed shadows as well, you might need to kind of couple this with like a spotlight or something like that, maybe like a dim spotlight. So let's say, for example, that I wanted there to be shadows coming off of this chair or something like that. Um, based on where the point light is, you might need to do some combinations of different lights to really get that look that you're looking for. So and again, very similar, whoops. So very similar, you can adjust the brightness of this light. And in this case, you can actually adjust the fall off. And when you adjust the fall off, you can see how basically what that's doing is that's changing how far the light goes from that point. And so these are good, like let's say for example, I think I have a lamp over here. These are good to place like inside lamps or something like that. So you can see how you can generate the effect of light coming from that lamp um, based on placing this where that lamp is. And so a very similar kind of light to the point light is a light fill. And so if you click on select object and you go over here to light fill, you can see how that does a lot of kind of the same thing as the omni light. And honestly, I'm not 100% clear on the difference between these. I'm going to bring the the brightness down. I think I think part of the di the difference on this one is this one's a little bit more for like filling in different spaces. So if you have like a dark space that you need to be more lit up, like um, I'm trying to think of a good example. Let let's just say that you had a space like this corner and you wanted it to be a little bit brighter. You could bring in a light fill in order to do that to kind of brighten up that space. So like for example, if you had light coming off of this and you felt like you needed this to be a little bit brighter that it should be and it isn't, a light fill is a good option for that. So in addition to the Omni light, there's also different kinds of lights that are more shaped. So like for example, this option here, this is an area light. What an area light is gonna do is it's basically going to emanate light from a bigger square. So it's gonna cast more light than uh, something like the point light. You can see as I move this up and down, what this does is it only, it only projects light in the direction that it's facing. So it's, it's like a spotlight in that sense, but you'll notice that this doesn't cast shadows either. But you can see how this is really good for getting a whole lot of light into a space. And as like the others, you can adjust the brightness. You can show your light source. So if you wanted this to be like a square light up in your ceiling or something like that, you could actually show that or you could turn that off. So you can also adjust the size of this light. And notice that as you do this, the amount of light being cast changes as well. So you can use this to really fill in lighting. Um, you can adjust the fall off, so how far the light goes. And this one also can be targeted a lot like the spotlight. So if you wanted that to point at a certain point in here, you could definitely do that. And so this could be great if you wanted to put it like behind your camera or something like that, um, facing towards something to cast more light. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the check mark there and we're actually going to, we'll go ahead and remove that one. And now let's take a look at the next kind of light, which is a line light. And so the line light is very similar to the um, to the area light. So it works in a lot the same way where I'm gonna move this down a little bit. So it's very similar to the area light. Um, in this case, what this is really good for is if you have to create like light fixtures or something like that, that actually have like a long bright strip of light, you can turn this on. So you can see how I was able to turn on show light source. And this uh, basically approximates what an actual like LED strip light or something like that would cast within your model. 
So and then the last thing I want to talk about, the last kind of material, is an emissive material. So this isn't technically a light as much as it is a material that um, basically shows as like a bright light in your model. So it's like a glowing material. So and these don't cast shadows either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to trash this light so that I only have my emissive material. And so basically the way you set this one up is you don't find it in your objects, you find it in your materials. And so if I click on this, for example, what I've done is I've actually applied an image to this face, but then I've gone down into my settings right here and you can adjust the emissive properties of this. And notice that it isn't really lighting this space. Like, so if you look around, the actual light being cast in the space isn't necessarily that much. It's more lighting up the material here. But you can use this to basically simulate, like if you had like neon signs or like lampshades. So let's say for example, I had my Omni light back in this lamp. So I'm gonna hit escape. We'll go ahead and add our Omni light back in here. Well, part of the problem with this is the outside of this isn't necessarily like glowing. And so if you wanted this to look kind of realistic and let's see, I don't know if it's gonna let me do that on this one. Maybe, hmm. Maybe this lampshade, we'll try that. So we're gonna click on this lampshade and we're actually gonna adjust this so that it's emissive. So like for example, let's go ahead and let's put an Omni light inside this. So I'm gonna close this down. I'm gonna add an Omni light in here. So there's a light cast right here, but it's a little bit unrealistic because the actual material of the lamp itself isn't glowing. Well, what you could do is you could adjust this you could adjust the emissive property of this to make it actually kind of glow like there's an actual light inside of it. So you can use that to create uh, things like that. You could use it to make things like TVs on the walls that glow, um, that sort of thing. That's where I'm gonna end this video. It's just kind of a quick overview of your lighting options within Lumion. I do wanna cover these a lot more in depth, but I'd love to get your opinion on what you thought. Are you interested in more tutorials on Lumion? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button button for new uh, rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.